I am so excited that you're here on my show today. Thanks for being here. Yes, thank you for having me. Yes, now you are a marriage and family intern. Yes, not? yes. I'm okay. a registered marriage and family therapist intern mm -hmm. in the state of California. Mm -hmm. And I work with couples, families, children, and adults in increasing their happiness. Wow. Yes. And then how did you get your start? What made you decide to go into that? You know what? It's just a beautiful story. Mm -hmm. I'm actually a licensed cosmetologist of 12 years. Wow. Got a license at the age of 17. Mm -hmm. And I was working in a barbershop. I was a, a stylist, a makeup artist. I worked for companies such as um, Mac, and I just loved what I did. And in doing so, and in serving my clients, I found that if you've ever been to a barbershop, if you've ever been and gotten your hair done, mm -hmm. they are your therapist. Right. <laughs> you go in there and you tell them your thing and what's going on and who you've been dating. Right. And I found that I actually listened to them. They felt heard. Mm -hmm. They wouldn't come for the blow dry. They would come to talk. Right. And they say that when you're good at something, you should charge. <laughs> so I, I like went, that. Yeah. Yeah. I went back to graduate school after mm -hmm. getting my psychology undergrad. Okay. And I just hustled and I did my work and I fell in love. I found my second love of my life, and that's why I have led to this career. Wow. Yeah. Well, congratulations to you. you. I mean, that's an amazing story and how you took something as simple as just being there for other people and listening mm -hmm. and you turn it around into a career for yourself. Yes. So, kudos to you. Well, that's exactly why I chose you to help me out. I've got some ask Chandria um, about love questions and letters mm -hmm. from some of the viewers out there. And so I'm no expert, you know, but I would love your recommendations today to help some people out there that have some questions. You know? Wonderful. Yes, absolutely. Alrighty. I'm excited. Let's see. Let's see. <laughs> okay. You're going to get juicy. So, all right. All right. The first letter. Dear Chandria, my in-laws are driving me crazy and my husband isn't making it any easier. It was my husband's idea to move in with them for a year to save up money to buy a house of our own in another, in another state. I'll start over. Dear Chandria, my in-laws are driving me crazy and my husband isn't making it any easier. It was his idea to move in with them for a year to save up money to buy a house of our own in another state. As a young bride, I wasn't crazy about the idea, but I supported it. Now, four years later, and a few setbacks, we are still living in his childhood home with his parents and siblings. When I bring it up, he gets so annoyed and we end up arguing every time. He assures me that this is temporary, but after four years, I don't know if we'd be moving anytime soon. I believe he's afraid to leave the nest and we argue so frequently that I wonder if our relationship will be able to survive. Naomi R. wants to know, what should she do? Mm, Naomi, you are not alone. <laughs> In-laws are definitely a tough subject mm -hmm. just because you love them and you need your own civil distance. Mm -hmm. Love them, but from afar. Right. So I think the best recommendation here is definitely develop a better communication with her husband mm -hmm. because that's where the love is. Right. That's where you need to grow just like a plant. The best solution I hear is improving the communication with I statements. Oh, I see. So it's possible that he might become reactive or upset or just not want to talk about it after a while mm -hmm. because it's it's attacking language versus um, providing a solution or a suggestion. Mm -hmm. There's a big difference between my love, I feel upset when such and such happens in this home mm -hmm. versus you never hear me out. Right. We're never moving out. Right. It's the extremes of never and always. Mm -hmm. So as long as you improve the I statements and get those rolling, we will get communication flowing and something will come from that. What the outcome is, who knows? But if you have a better communication with your husband, you could be in a box and still be in love. Wow. Great mm -hmm. advice. Yes. Great advice. Yes. Thank you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you hear that, Naomi? Just talk it out. <laughs> Don't make any rash decisions. Okay, the next one. It says, Dear Chandria, my 16-year-old daughter wants to go on birth control pills. Her mother and I are divorced and have a difference in opinion. My ex-wife would rather support the idea rather than become a grandparent sooner than later. Personally, I feel she's giving our daughter a pass just because she has a boyfriend now. I feel we should be firm and put our foot down on the fact that she should not be having sex, boyfriend or not. Ordinarily, we pride ourselves on making big decisions together, but this one is beyond us. How can we ever agree? Mark B wants to know. Mm, Mark. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh. Being a, uh, a single father is tough. Mm -hmm. It is so tough. 
And Mark, I will say this, one of the most beautiful opportunities you will have in this life is to grow as a parent. And there's this thing that we call, it's called imperfect parenting. It's knowing that you are good enough regardless of what the outcome is. It's detaching yourself from your the, the mother of your child from your daughter's behaviors or their results. Mm -hmm. It's knowing that you are coming forth in your in your authenticity and you're just your full madness and saying, daughter, this is what I could provide to you in guidance mm -hmm. and in psychoeducation for birth control and sex and just all that that nitty gritty stuff right. and still detaching yourself and saying, I provided everything I could as a father and my baby is gonna make her own decisions. And that's all. That's all you can do. Right. Yeah. They're kind of grown at 16, aren't they? <laughs> they're, they're, you know, they're there. They're, well, there's some people, though, that be 20-something and they're not grown. Oh, right. They are not grown. Touché. Touché. Yes. Touché. Touché. The right. third question is, Dear Chandria, mm -hmm. I have finally found the woman I want to marry and everything has been perfect, but when we discussed how we would sign our names on the certificate, she let me know that she wants to keep her last name instead of changing it to mine. Now I know this is 2017 and everything and a lot of the rules in the rule books have changed, but I'm old school and I think that the woman should change her last name to her husband's name. How can I be supportive of her desire to keep her name, but also not feel like less of a man because she doesn't want to take mine? This comes from Carter C. Any advice mm. for Carter? Yes. Well, Carter, just to begin, congratulations on finding the one. That is definitely <laughs> right? exciting. Yeah. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And Carter, I guess I'll start off with this. A rose by any other name would just smell as sweet. So it's not necessarily the labels you put on something like we together, it's complicated, or we mm -hmm. married, we're not, we're together. Mm -hmm. Or even adding a last name for, for your wife to be. Mm -hmm. More so, it's about how you guys feel about each other. But you know, I will address it. And I think it's definitely a mutual decision that you have to make, not just one person or pushing somebody to do something they don't want to do will never have a good outcome. It's definitely something that has to birth naturally mm -hmm. from your loved one, from your boo thing. So if she's not willing, there's no point in pushing her. Maybe express to her how you feel with I statements, with telling her how much you adore her and the top three reasons why you feel you'll be more connected to her. Oh, that's the winner right there. Name. You tell her yes, that. Yes, <laughs> yes, you know, add in a little dinner in there, some flowers, <laughs> really just speak to her heart. Because it, it sounds like more that you are bringing in facts. You're bringing in, this is what my granddaddy did. This is what my friend did with his wife. It's more about what is right for the couple. Every couple is different, and this is definitely something you are not alone with. So I hope it goes well, and I'd love to know some feedback on what others think. Awesome, and, and that's such a popular topic. Mm, yes. With, I mean, for, for decades of whether a woman wants to I know I know quite a number of women that are married, and never change her name. Mm. The last question comes from Jamie V. Jamie says, Dear Chandria, my partner has hit a very rough patch in life with the loss of a parent, losing a career job, and taking on a new position with a significant difference in pay. I have stepped up to be supportive every step of the way, but instead I get shut out or subjected to melancholy rants and pessimism. I suggested therapy, but of course that didn't go over so well. I think I'm wasting my time. How can we help Jamie? Jamie, this is difficult because grief and loss is definitely a subject that not everybody is comfortable with. Right. On top of that, he's having a transition, especially when it comes to occupations. So what comes to me in just listening to what it is you're needing guidance in is not so much providing a solution to your husband, but just simply being there for him. Mm -hmm. Just hearing him out, the gift of being truly present. Just hearing what it is he has to say because he, you might be the only person that is going to hear him. And in time, he will find his own path. In marriage, it's not so much about saving one or the other, but just truly being there for them and catching them when they fall. Mm -hmm. And it seems like your husband has fallen at this point. So just gently be there for him and help himself pick up to where he wants to be, not necessarily where any of us think he should be. Mm -hmm. Wow, yeah. excellent advice. Well, I thank you today for yes. helping all of my viewers today with their personal <laughs> questions, and you've been excellent. 